Hey, what is going on guys? I represent Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at why tank junglers in 7.13 now are very strong and why they're very underrated. There's a few different items right now in the game that are making these tank junglers super good, but they're still not items that are being bought a lot on these champions. So in this video, we're going to go over why tank junglers are super good right now and what you're going to want to look to build on them. So that being said, guys, let's get started. So the most obvious reason to why tank junglers are stronger right now is due to the Cinderhawk changes. I'll put the changes up on screen here that happened in this patch. I'm not going to go too much into detail about this one though because if you read the patch notes then you'd know this. You'd know that tank junglers are going to be stronger because of the Cinderhawk changes. But that's not the only reason to why tank junglers are better right now in this patch. So if we go back a little bit to patch 7.12, there are changes to two items that are very underrated items right now, but they're super strong items that got really good changes in patch 7.12. So the first one is Righteous Glory. Now Righteous Glory got a change in that patch to where you're now getting 10% CDR, you're also getting 30 armor, and the health got decreased by a little bit, but the CDR that you get and the armor is definitely worth the little bit of health that you're missing. And then Knight's Vow also got a change to where it now gives you 10% CDR for free. So keep in mind that if you're buying these two items on your tank champions, then you're getting a free 20% CDR now, which you would not have been getting in previous patches. And number two, these items are very cost efficient items. They're very cheap items. They're like some of the cheapest items in the game. And therefore, because you're getting so many stats from these items very early on into the game, it just means you're going to be very strong in the mid game and you're going to be a super strong threat for your team when you do start team fighting. And then to top it all off, the synergy you get from buying these health items on these tank champions with Locket is even better now because whenever you do pick up the Locket, it now does scale off of your bonus health or the shield scales off of your bonus health. So therefore, if you're playing someone like Nunu and you grab your Cinder Hulk, you grab your War Mogs, you grab a Knight's Vow, and you also have like a Righteous Glory, your Locket shields are going to be over a thousand HP. Like the amount of shielding you're going to get from this item is going to be insane and if you also do grab a stone plate later on into the game then the ability to just keep your carries alive and just keep them really healthy in team fights is super good right now in this patch and then the knight's vow just overall i think is one of the strongest items in the game right now it's very cost efficient it's only 2300 gold and i think the passive on it is probably one of the best passives for any item in the game because what the passive does is when you put it on your teammate it gains you an additional 20 armor it also gives you 15 percent movement speed towards whoever you put it on and then the other passive on it there's two passives on it is that it heals you for 12% of the damage that your partner deals and it also redirects 12% of the damage your partner takes from champions to you as true damage. Now this is actually an insane passive because it's not like the Phantom Dancer passive to where it only directs 12% of the damage from the most recent target that hit you. It redirects 12% of the damage from every single champion in the game. So that's actually really, really good. It's basically like a mini exhaust that you're getting uh, for the early to mid game. And the passive on this item, I just think is super good right now. So if you're not getting Knight's Vow on your tank champions in this patch, then I really just think you're doing it wrong. Now keep in mind that for ranged champions, the healing that you get and the damage reduction is reduced by 50%. So this is most effective if you are placing it on one of your fed melee carries. So for example, if you got a Yasuo on your team, then you should 100% be picking up a Knight's Vow if that Yasuo is doing very well in the early game. If you have just any melee carry champion, I guess, that's doing well in the early game, then you should be putting this on them. It still is good on your AD carry champion. Like if your AD carry champion is the one with the most kills and the most damage on your team then I would put it on them in that situation but if you've got a melee champion that's doing well and your AD carry is also doing well then it's probably most efficient to be putting it on your melee champion. 
And then Warmogs is another item that has really good synergy with the Locket as well as the Cinderhawk. Because of the Cinderhawk buff and because the bonus health went up from 15% up to 20%, it means that if you do pick up Warmogs, then it's an 800 health item, but because of the passive on Cinderhawk, it's basically a 960 health item. So the amount of HP you're gonna get uh, from this build if you do grab a Warmogs and the Cinderhawk and the synergy between that and the locket, you're just going to be a very, very tanky champion and super hard to deal with. So now I will put up a sample build here up on screen for every single one of these champions. Now, of course, this is just a sample build though. So this build is not going to be one that you're going to want to run for every single game. This is just a build that is a guideline and it's a really good build, but depending on the situation, you're going to want to interchange a few items here or there. For example, on the Ramus build, after you do grab your Righteous Glory, if the enemy team does have a lot of AP damage, then grabbing the Knight's Vow in that situation might not be the best idea because you're getting armor from that item and it's not going to be super efficient if the enemy team has like a Syndra and a Rumble and they also have a Lease in the jungle. Take these builds as like, it's not set in stone, but these builds are very strong in this patch right now and in most situations, they're going to be what you're going to want to build. So that is gonna be it for this video, guys. Hopefully you do now know why tank junglers are super good in this patch right now, and hopefully you do have a pretty good idea of what you should be looking to build on them in this patch. So that being said, guys, if you did enjoy, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. So thanks for watching, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in my next video.